Hi guys, this is Lachette from Scarlet Moon Creations and I am back with a new video. This is my response to the tag. 54321 Tarot. And my Autumn Tarot TBR. Okay, so I have my new divination journal here. You haven't seen it yet, but it exists and I have everything written out so I'll just put this to the side this is a tag that is very popular uh, created by Kelly Bear links in the description to her original video I was tagged by Robin's reflections thank you so much I appreciate that I was considering doing this tag and uh, starting to think about my responses when I was actually tagged so here we are Okay, so the point with this tag is to talk about five decks, four tarot books, three spreads, two habits or paraphernalia, and one card that I either wish to embody or one piece of tarot advice. And then at the end, I can tag uh, five people or however many people. Let's get started. I don't want to drag this out. I'm short on time, actually. Okay, so the five decks that I have chosen. Um, that was the hard part, even though, personally, I feel the least interesting part of the videos. <sighs> because we talk about decks all the time. But anyway, no shade to anyone, I'm just saying. I decided um, to combine this tag with a video, a tarot video I was going to do anyway. If you haven't noticed this year, I've been doing uh, seasonal videos talking about decks I feel embody or uh, project or show fit with a particular season. I happen to live in New York City, so we get all four seasons of the year. And now it is autumn. So autumn, fall. Right? That's those are the decks and I have five to show you so let's start at the beginning also um Kelly Bear said we're not to post a cheat or whatever but she knows people cheat and here is my first cheat I don't care sue me by the time you see this this video is already edited and up and I've moved on with my life ha huh. so they're not all tarot decks um, if you're new here, I don't have a huge collection and I have a relatively even amount of tarot and oracle cards. And again, for these seasonal videos, I include both tarot and oracle. So let us start with an oracle. These are the Making Magic Playing Cards Manifest Your Dreams by Priestess Moon. Rockpool Publishing deck, and these are tiny. It comes in a little magnetic box. Um, how to use the cards. Use these cards to boost your spell work or carry a chosen card to achieve your goals. Lay out your cards. Light a candle in front of you. Focus on the desired outcome for excellent results. I got this in a trade with, I do believe, Sunset Bow Tarot. These are the backs of the cards, and I haven't used them a lot. I do have a walkthrough of this deck on my channel. Uh, why do I feel like this deck fits uh, the with fall, with autumn? Because uh, probably, honestly, uh, the coloring, the black and gold, definitely gives autumn fall vibes. Halloween, Samhain. Uh, also, the purpose, they're a deck to use for magic, um, very specifically, and October in particular being a kind of witchy time of year, a time for doing magic, the veil being thin again, uh, like it was in Beltane, which is the opposite, and the opposite time of year, but a lighter half. 
I just feel like these guys fit that vibe, like doing dark magic, not necessarily black magic, but yeah, or maybe doing shadow work and that kind of thing. These these this these cards just give me that vibe. They're very grounded as well. And like I said, the black and gold definitely autumn vibes. So that those are the making magic cards. I've used them a couple of times. Not as much as I probably thought I would, but that might change. If not this year, what's left of this year, next year. Deviant Moon Tarot by Patrick Valenza. My favorite deck. The One of the oldest I own and <laughs> one that I put through the most work. Uh, these are the backs. We have that black and gold again and the moons. Mystical, magical. We're, we have a trend. <laughs> Dare I say it. Uh, I love the colors on this because, like, who doesn't? They're kind of creepy, but I think in a fun way. Maybe not this girl, but I... I love this deck for not being human, but humanoid. Um, the explanation that Patrick Valenza gives kind of with a lot of the figures is that they're kind of in between, in a liminal space, almost. Uh, and you'll notice a lot of them, their heads are half and half, and so one half quite often seems asleep, and the other half looks like a moon. Um, almost all of the cards have moons in them. The shading, the color grading gives nighttime vibes, if not nighttime, dusk. Occasionally, some feel like maybe dawn. Also, this is a deck quite often used for shadow work. I feel like, and I think a lot of other people agree, that Patrick kind of leaned more into the shadow aspects of each card, the darker sides of each card, maybe the negative aspects, if you will. Um, some of them seem to be wearing masks. And I appreciate that. Uh, quite honestly, other than the coloring, the dimness, we're in the dark half of the year type vibe, um, the wands in particular in this deck, which is not 100% surprising, but they give a very earthy vibe, which I associate with autumn. So that is why... We got these, you know, I feel like, uh, again, Halloween and the, the creepy crawlies, the spooky, the spoopy, the grotesque, um, it all kind of shows here, but it's not too much for me. Um, the lunatics the sci-fi, the fantasy, all of that kind of fits with Autumn, the gothic even to an extent. So yeah, that's why this deck is hella Autumn to me. You might be sick of me talking about, but it is my fairy's oracle. Uh, to be completely honest, Okay, here's the book so you know the box cover looks like this and I no longer have it and I've talked about that in several videos. It's fairies, right? And you would think maybe I'd say fairies go with the spring or the summer and they do to an extent. I had the Heart of Fairies Oracle with my summer decks but this one, the backs... This is creepy. This is one, of, there's a card that has all of these fairy heads on it and I, it's one of my least, if not 
the worst card in this deck. I don't like looking at it. But um, the coloring for the backs, like, and then the borders, we got these browns. If you look at some of the backgrounds, not the singers, but others, we have this kind of sepia tone thing happening. Um, there's also... Most of them are in a forest of some kind, and it's like an old growth forest. Like the sun doesn't reach it to 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 the floor too well. Um, some of these cards feel like they're in caves, and that also gives that kind of going within, going underground, uh, and. The mushrooms, like, it just says autumn to me. And the veil being thin during this time of year, leading up to Samhain, the All Hallows Eve, Halloween, um, that makes sense. Like, we're going within. And also, on the other side of the veil, to some, is fairy. Now, one thing I will say once again, because I haven't taken them off, uh, the cards do not come with this pink stuff on the bottom. That was me studying the deck, and I covered the names. Uh, so, don't expect that if you're purchasing this. But also, can you see, I talked about this in the last one, in my disheveled decks uh, video, like I've used the hell out of these. Another of my oldest decks. Um, like, doesn't he look like he's, you know, among the decaying autumn leaves, mushrooms? Like, it just screams fall to me. So it is fall. Me, the Spirit Keepers Tarot Revelation Edition. This is the first printing and having seen the second printing which recently came out um and is shipping it even fits more so this is by benabel when uh and this deck is like the ultimate esoteric uh deck basically <laughs> Now, I have this in order for the deck and walk because I use the the cards every 10 days and I am lazy so I don't want to like take them out of order. <laughs> I'm just explaining so you understand why they look the way they do. These are the backs. So what happens is, um, Betabel made three versions of this deck. The first version was black and white the second version the vitruvian was like sepia toned and then the third version was supposed to be full color and it is however when printing even though the proof showed the full saturation when printing and she got the decks they were a little bit desaturated and as a person that loves color, I was disappointed. The second printing, now they're like fully vibrant, saturated colors as she originally created. But these being slightly desaturated make them kind of like a 2.5 instead of a 3.0. And that fits the fall vibe. Uh, maybe not as much as the Vitruvian or the original editions, but I still like that there's some color in this. Now, the purpose of this deck is to work with the spirits of each card. So they each have a title as well as like the name of the card. Now you can use this as a regular tarot deck or you can go deeper and use it kind of like the Golden Dawn probably originally intended, which is to 
kind of work with the spirit or energy of each card to manifest something in your life. Um, very ceremonial magic type things. So we have things like the shields and uh, the archangels here. And then instead of kings and queens. And we have all kinds of esoteric symbols and historical figures on here, like the astrological glyphs and alchemical glyphs, I Ching on the bottoms there, elemental symbols as well, ceremonial magic, uh, deities, whatnot. So, yes, that is, I mean, working with spirits, doing magic, uh, the slightly desaturated colors, the uh, ceremonial magic, symbols, glyphs, uh, things that you would use for manifestation and just magic in general. Uh, it's similar to the Making Magic cards where they had a lot of talismanic symbols on them. And these could be another type of talisman. So definitely plan it on diving deeper with this. This deck has been screaming or calling to me, I should say. Not screaming. The Fairy's Oracle does the screaming. But this one has been calling to me and I have ideas. Ideas. Um, and who am I to like ignore the intuition and the call of guides and spirits and such? The last deck I will talk to you about is my Llewellyn Tarot. So you'll see why almost immediately the backs. Like autumn all over this. Uh, this kind of brown wood looking. And this deck is uh, based, at least the Major Arcana is based on Welsh mythology. So on the back we have the Whale Simru, which is uh, dragon, the red dragon. And of course, we start out with Murden, Murden, the hermit. And again, uh, magic. Personally, um, probably my second most used deck, tarot deck anyway. And a lot of that is because it's one of the ones I've had the longest, but also because I've always been drawn to Welsh mythology and I now am a member of a Wiccan tradition that is Welsh based. And so I work with a lot of the deities and uh myths and legends and lore that are explored in the major arcana of this card. I feel like the miners can go either way when we're talking about uh, whether they are spring or summer or winter or fall, but overall, like probably because of the borders, I get that autumn vibe. Like, even when it's an airy card like the King of Swords here, it feels like just a, a overcast autumn day, right? Same, this Hierophant, there's like snow. It could be late autumn. We have definitely gotten snow in autumn. The This can be early autumn. It's still green somewhat. Um, so I think that's why... I feel it can fit. It's also, again, very earthy and a lot of things happen in caves, on mountain tops, in, you know, even when there's water, it's, you know, we're on 
the planet Earth, right? We're on solid ground here, uh, dirt and rock, and these pentacles, though, definitely the most earthy of the miners. But yeah, um, Miss Magic, um, if you've ever watched that show, Merlin, it's it was a UK show about the myth of Merlin and author, King Arthur, uh, which I love. It's a comfort show now. I just randomly watch episodes. This has, for obvious reasons, similar vibes. And, yeah. Like, I just want to pull a cup of tea, have a hearty soup made with root vegetables. <laughs> when I see this deck. So that is the last of my five decks, the last of my autumn decks. Will I use all five of these? Probably. Of all of the uh, seasonal decks, I always say, like, they're my tarot TBR. Thank you, Candy Soul and Soil. So this is my autumn tarot TBR. And TTBR. Uh... If you want to do this and just this tag, go ahead, have at it. Um, the people I'm going to mention in the end, definitely included in that. Because why not? If you haven't posted your Autumn Tarot decks, let's do it. I just always wind up using the... Deviant Moon Tarot and the Fairy's Oracle. Llewellyn, I'm gonna bring out. <laughs> and I've been having a hankering for the Spirit Keeper's Tarot for particular purposes. And I think working with the Making Magic cards might do, do well for me. Let's see about the books. So, it's time for me to let you all know. That I actually don't really read too many uh, tarot books. I've been reading tarot since the early 2000s. And I have only read a total of three tarot books. And those three that I mentioned have been very recently. Like, I started reading The 78 Degrees of Wisdom last year. And I hope to finish it this year. I'm kind of doing it with a deck study. The the deviant moon deck study which you know, there'll be a video for when it comes the four books i'm going to talk about is another tbr basically tbr means to be read if you are unaware and i'll briefly explain what those books are and why i want to read them it was really hard to pick just four except this first one because i've been wanting to read this since forever I'll put a thing on the screen so you know what the book cover looks like. The Holistic Tarot, an integrative approach to using tarot for personal growth by Benabel Wen. This sounds awesome. Everything I've come across by Benabel Wen has been detailed and in depth, and you can feel that, how we say it. She put her foot in them. And there's no fussing around. It's just a wealth of thought and information. And I appreciate that. And honestly, this whole list could have been her books. But we're not going to do that. Um, it says, designed for beginning as well as experienced tarot readers, Holistic Tarot offers a fresh and easy-to-follow approach to the use of the tarot deck for tapping into subconscious knowledge and creativity. Um, she provides a complete guide to using the tarot to foster personal development. She gives a comprehensive overview of the history of tarot and theories. It's a complete compendium of tarot study that every practitioner should have in his or her library. And I like the idea of doing things holistically in the first place. So why not do that with the tarot? 
And with this and the other books, if you have thoughts and opinions about them, do feel free to let me know in the comments because I want to know what you know or what you think. Book two, Queering the Tarot by Cassandra Snow. Coming at tarot from a different perspective, um, having a focus on LGBTQIA plus uh, communities when it comes to the tarot is something I'm really, really interested in. Um, I think having as many perspectives as humanly possible is wonderful. I am curious. I don't know how in-depth this author goes into with each of the sub-communities, but we shall see. Tarot is best used for self-discovery. Tarot archetypes provide the reader with a window, but what if that window only opened up onto the world that was white, European, heterosexual? I like to see more diversity in my decks, and if I had more money and could prioritize buying uh, all the decks. I definitely would have a even more diverse collection than I do, but slowly but surely is just as good. Um, the interpretations of the tarot has passed down through tradition. At the root of card meanings are archetypes that we accept without question, but at what point do archetypes become stereotypes? In Queering the Tarot, Cassandra Snow deconstructs the meaning of the 78 cards, explaining the ways in which each card may be interpreted against the norm. It explores themes of sexuality coming out, gender and gender queering, sources of oppression and empowerment, and many topics especially familiar to not straight folks. Um, it's an identity-based approach. And I think that's important, an important aspect in today's world, honestly. So, want to read that. Okay, next I have a book that has also been on my TBR for a long time. It's a Tower for Troubled Times, Confront Your Shadow, Heal Yourself, and Transform the world. It's by Shaheen Miro and Teresa Reed. Doing shadow work is a thing. I do do that. Uh, and I actually run a retreat, which is coming up in a couple of days uh, filming this. Also, I've gone through, as all of us have in some way, shape, or form, troubled times. So when I saw this, uh, actually just searching for tarot books in my library's uh, catalog, I was like, hmm. It says, uh, out of darkness comes the light of transformation. Each of us has a shadow that darkens our inner and outer selves. In Tarot for Troubled Times, Shaheen Miro and Teresa Reed show us how working with the shadow, facing it directly, leaning into it rather than in the way, releases power that can free ourselves from negative mental habits and destructive emotions to find healing ourselves and others. Um, tarot offers a rich and healing path. It's not a book of how, how to read the tarot. They provide specific specialty readings and suggested practices for issues such as grief, addiction, depression, fear, divorce, illness, abuse, and oppression, and provide practical suggestions for stepping up as an ally or leader so that you can shape social policies. Um, sign me up. I like all of that I'm very much interested in. Somewhere, somehow, I'll be reading that book. The last book I want to talk about is one that Robin mentioned in her video she owns. And I totally want this for the same reason she got it. 
uh, the Tarot Playbook by Linda Cowles. 78 Novel Ways to Connect with Your Cards. This is not the only tarot book like this I want, but it seems like more of an activity book than like learning about the tarot or how to read cards and things like that. Um, things like that zombie uh, tarot activity that went around a couple of months ago and last year the mystery, murder mystery tarot game both of which I will be doing next month, by the way, so look out for that. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I love the idea of playing with my cards. It doesn't all have to be deep tarot for shadow work and magic and, you know, or study. It can be fun, and I love, love, love that idea. And I'm like, well, there are two from this playbook. What else is in there? Um... And it's a way to get to know your cards, I feel, in a different kind of way. And effort effortlessly bond with your cards by playing your way through its combination of games, activities, and what-if readings. Practice the ancient art of taroga. Predict the weather. Try your hand at genetic engineering. With the tarot playbook, you can explore your deck's distinctively, distinctive personality broaden your reading skills and mine your imagination and intuition all within the without the pressure of serious study so that sounds fun and i think having a fun book is a good idea when it comes to tarot uh like these tags they are fun so why not do them okay next up for three, we have to do three tarot spreads. So let's start out uh, with some spreads I created. First off is the self-care spread. This is a four card spread, as you can see, one, two, three, and four. Honestly, it doesn't matter how we put these down on the table. But yeah, card number one is generally overall, how are you feeling today? Uh, card two is in what area do you need the most self-care? Card three is why do you need the most self-care in that area? Or simply why? And card four is how you should go about doing that self-care. And I kind of created this as a, an enticement to get people to book readings with me. Um, this is a reading I quite often do for free at, at events where I'm not really being paid. <laughs> um, when I'm volunteering my services for one reason or another. I did this a lot at uh, Camp Anime, an event that was for uh, kids, camp and anime, and I would use uh, my fairy decks, which fit more with the anime thing, and my Deviant Moon Tarot, actually. It also fits overall with Scarlet Moon Creations, my business, which has a foundational focus on self-care, like take care of you. Sometimes that's a nice hot bath, sometimes it's a spiritual reading. But that is my spread, and I thought about changing it actually, but we won't go too deep on that. This book is my old, uh... <laughs> Uh, divination journal that I've filled up. Anyway, deck interview. We all know what that is. And I have taken several that I liked and kind of mashed them together. And this is a deck interview that I like doing. And I now do that with every single deck I have. So it's eight questions. Introduce yourself. What are your strengths? What are your limitations? What can I learn from you? Excuse me. What is the best way to connect with you? Uh, and then I kind of messed up the order here. But would you work well with other decks? In what situations did I use you? 
and the outcome of our relationship. I added some of these questions after seeing like what other people do with their decks. Like deck pairings is where I get would you work well with other decks? And sometimes I ask like, well, which ones? Um, but yeah. So I do that every single time. And lastly, I'll talk about one more here. Let me do this one. Uh, this is from Tarot Elements by Melissa Sonoba. And I hope it's okay to uh, show this. But this is a six card reading. And in Tarot Elements, she has a six card reading pretty much for each. But cards one, two, and three on the top are what gets in your way. Four and five of what pulls you forward and card six is what can you hold on to now uh, the way she puts it is like the water readings are to deal with emotions relationships that kind of thing you know what the element of water has to do with um, in the tarot usually generally so that is the type of uh, situations you would use this spread for and it's in the shape of the elemental symbol for water two i'm gonna cheat again you're supposed to do two habits or two paraphernalia let's just start with the habits um when i shuffle i riffle shuffle usually three times and I do one overhand shuffle. Now, usually it's, well, not usually, but sometimes it's like this, three times in a row, and then I overhand shuffle like so. Other times, I'll riffle shuffle twice. Overhand shuffle. Probably neater. And then riffle shuffle again. So I don't know. I just I have to riffle shuffle three times. And before you come for me, no, I don't bridge. Um, I just I don't know that I was ever taught how to bridge. And then just trying, you know, every time I try, they just slide together. I'm like, well, that's the point, right? Like I'm not trying to be a poker player or a uh, work in a casino at the tables. So that's that. I also do a like chant or charge that is from my Coven's Book of Shadows for every reading. This is a relatively new habit. Like maybe only in the last five years, maybe four years. Um, and I'm not going to tell you what it is because that is old found information, but I, uh, call upon a particular deity and ask for their protection and helping me choose the right card. Um, so my reading is honest and understandable to me. <laughs> So yeah, I even I don't have to say it out loud. Um, if I'm by myself, I'll say it out loud. But if I'm doing readings with clients in front of me, um, even free ones, I'll say it before. It actually also helps me like kind of ground and focus because there have been times um, at festivals where I'm setting up and I'm chatting with people, and I'm in that like getting ready mode. And the first re the first client comes, I I want a reading, and I just go right into it without like focusing and then I feel like all over the place so this is like something that like put me in the moment of the reading and into it so paraphernalia I have this red cloth that I now read with this was a gift from someone in my coven's tradition it's really nice I tend to read with a red cloth and she got me a red reading cloth so here we are the other thing is my paraphernalia <laughs> these junk journals that i create 
for my back studies. So I have videos about this. Uh, this is the one for the Fairies Oracle. Right, it's a junk journal. This was a file folder. These are random bits of paper and things that postcards and stickers and whatnot. It's, you know, not all the same type of paper. Some of them have been stained. I use all different types of pens and whatnot. And some of these are book pages with illustration. Some of this is wallpaper. <laughs> That's what I mean by junk. Some of these are envelopes from what have you. This is pieces of the box that the deck, the fairy's oracle, and the guidebook was in. So that's what I mean by junk journal. And you take your junk and you make it into a journal. Right? Uh, so yeah, two paraphernalia and two habits. Last but not least my one i want to talk about a card i wish to embody that is the nine of pentacles or the nine of coins or the nine of earth and i'm trying to put these in the center here i love this card this is probably my favorite tarot card i have yet to come across a version that i do not love um, what I have here is the Lightseer's Tarot, the Good Tarot, the Herb Crafter's Tarot, the Universal Goddess Tarot, the Line Strider Tarot, and, you know, the Radiant White Rider Waite Smith. I can even find you the ones from the Deviant Moon Tarot because that's how much I love this card. Like... I, this one, at this point, is the one I want to embody the most. Um, and doing the deck and walk recently, I uh, found out this, uh, this card is the Venus in Virgo. And, like, look at her. I've drawn her. Let me get the Spirit Keeper's Tarot version out first. Um, just having your shit together, um, in particular, like, when I saw that one, I was like, oh, that's, that's my girl. That, she the one. She is the one. Um, back, back, back in... Towards the beginning of my channel, there is a video where I, I mean, I paint this card. You wouldn't believe it. It was uh, 31 Days of Tarot. The first time I did it, I think that was 2017 or 18. And one of the prompts was to draw a tarot card or paint a tarot card. And there she is. She ain't perfect. I use watercolor and probably not the best for this particular type of thing, but I love it. Um, not perfect, but you know, solid, respectable. Um, the fruits of the labor have been sown. I love this one. This is my favorite one now because this is like what I do. The herbs hanging and like making stuff, the book journal in the back, like you know, that herbal plant wisdom thing. I love her. so you know, the curly hair, it's a black woman. So, yeah, I you know, I'm working to get there, even in a general way. Okay, so that is it for this tag. Um, what did you think? of my video. Uh, I have one last task and that is to tag five people and my five people. I try to mm, think outside the box I guess. 
because so many people have done this. It's like, who can I tag? And I decided to tag the boy diviner. I don't know if he is still doing tags, but um, Casper, if you are, you are tagged. I quite enjoy your videos and it's nice having a non-Western perspective on the tarot, quite honestly. Uh, and the t industry and all of that stuff. So I think it would be fun to hear. I'm going to tag uh, Sunique Tarot, whose videos are very informative and very in depth. I think I again I don't know if they do tag videos but I'm hoping they'll do this one I'm going to tag abundant life tarot Kim haven't done a tag in a while if you can I would appreciate it I think this would be fun I think you would have fun so please do if you don't it's okay no pressure uh, and the last two are not tarot tubers, but booktubers who I know really love tarot. They do read tarot quite a bit. Um, so first is the Curious Owl. Gabby, again, this is outside your usual video type, but I think it will be cool. Fun tarot tags do happen here on YouTube. And um, it'd be cool for you to do this um however you wish to do it i don't know what your collection is like so but do you girl and paco from bad witch books again fun tarot tag not your usual video content if you can do it that would be awesome um we have been on the same team for both rounds of the tarot readathon so let's do this again right let's have fun i would love to see you do this video so with that like this video if you liked it subscribe if you are new hit the notification bell so you know when the next video is coming um i don't know what that will be i have lots filmed but hardly anything edited <laughs> but it will come since the retreat will have passed and i can now look at other things um Links in the description to everything I've mentioned and everyone I've mentioned. Uh, my social media accounts, if you'd like to follow me anywhere else, there's also a 10% off discount code to my Etsy shop where I make all natural bath and body products, a la that Nine of Pentacles from Light Seers Tarot. But I also offer tarot and oracle card readings with some of these decks and others. Um... Guys, as always, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.